All right, welcome back to the golf podcast and happy fourth. Yeah, man. Happy fourth. Cheers to the fourth. So um we got we got a couple of things we want to dig into today. And one of them is this debate that we've been having, you and I back and forth, of whether the match, which I think reached its peak a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. is it over? Is it dead? Is it done? And I asked that because like neither one of us really tuned into it. I don't even know if we knew it was coming. It felt like it snuck up. It snuck up. I kind of vaguely knew. I saw some things online, and then it happened, and then I'm trying to find out who played in it. Right. So the question we have is like, A, does it still have a place, or is this thing running a little bit too long, or is there a way that that it can be revamped and made better? Mm -hmm. So I, I have a little bit of a feeling on all those things. I got an idea of like where it actually still does fit in some regard. Maybe it's changed its audience just a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, there's something that I've been I've been longing to see in exhibition golf for a long time that I think the match could pivot to mm-hmm. and could could start to bring back a, a bigger audience. But there's there's no doubt it's nowhere near the hype levels of when remember it had kicked off as a pay per view event. Phil versus Tiger, right? Yeah, I think right. it, I think it died after that. I I think it just slowly <laughs> started to lose traction uh-huh. after that. So we're gonna dig into that. The other thing we got to talk about though is Ricky, man. Yeah, man. Back in the winner's circle, we completed the comeback. He did, he and did. we did. We called it. In fact, last week on the show, I remember I said, "Mark my words, he's trending in the right direction. Mm-hmm. This is the field and the spot and the course where he could get it done. And on the show, you even threw a couple bucks on it on DraftKings. I threw it right out there. 10 bucks. I won 150. He was going off at 15 to 1. I said he's got the rocket mortgage on his sleeve. Yeah. This is his event. And I was actually a little nervous because he wasn't, like, like I think day three, he wasn't keeping up. He was fell back a little bit. But then Sunday morning, because of the rain delay, they moved all the tee times up. And I'm like, dude, this guy's two up in the lead. Yeah. Let's go. He still gave us a, a rocky one, though, on Sunday. Yeah, he did. You know, the, mm-hmm. the which we could talk about in a second, but the conditions it, with the rain got really soft. The guys were able to go very low. You know, we mm-hmm. talked a little bit about this with TPC River Highlands. But uh, he made me nervous. He, the lead slipped away from him, missing a putt or two or there. I still think that right now I love where Ricky's swing is. Yep. It's it's great to see the changes that he's implemented, but I still think the putter is where he could get himself into a little bit of trouble, and he – he left a few strokes out there on the greens that he didn't need to and mm-hmm. opened up the door a little bit. But you also had great, great performances by Hadwin and by uh, Morikawa. Those are two guys I would not sleep on for future bets. 100%. They're trending. Mm-hmm. And I think Morikawa now becomes the next guy in line that's that to break his slump. He, he's so, won an open championship before, Morikawa. Yeah. So Well, and that was his last win two yep. years ago. So now he is one, I would say like, and, and you guys drop in the comments, who is, who's the person who's most overdue for a That's win a great now? Question. Yeah. Because it, everyone, the tip of the tongue was, was Ricky Fowler. Yep. Um, in fact, he went 1,610 days between wins, Ricky. It's quite a bit of time. But I'll tell you hmm. what, I've always been a Ricky fan and even more endearing to me was when he was interviewed, he, he walks off the green. He's a little bit choked up. He's got his wife and his kid there. And here's a guy who just got the hugest monkey off his back. Yeah. What everyone was about talking it. about, about the win. And what does he say? He says, the win felt good, but there are more important yep. things in life. Yep. And you know what's funny? If It tells you how you grow and you change and you mature. When I was younger watching this is before i had family and kids mm-hmm. i would watch something like that and i i wouldn't have the same attachment to it it didn't have the same meaning to me until i had kids of, of my mm-hmm. own sure i would have almost looked at that a little cynically of being like ah this guy doesn't have the competitive spirit right he right, just right. won like that's that's so important mm-hmm. right now like it's as you, you 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 age and you have a family and like you're really your perspectives change I can identify with that even more now. Yeah, you know, no I'm doubt. home on Sunday with my kids. And, yeah. and you know, it, you just realize it's like, he's right. The totally. win is great, but like, geez, the perspective on this guy. The guy it. who's had a lot of heartbreaks mm-hmm. on Sundays. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, just keeps that perspective. Like, you know what? The win is awesome, but there's more important things. And he said the, uh, he said that at the US Open, he said, hey, 
doesn't matter that I didn't get the job done. There's still more important things. It, so, you know, it puts consistent. him in such a great position mm-hmm. because now he can go out there. He can enjoy his career. Um, he he doesn't have. I, you can perceive that he doesn't have that pressure to be anything that anyone else wants him to be. Because there always will be conversations, even totally. with this win. There'll always be conversations about Ricky that he underperformed. You know, win wise for his talent, mm-hmm. that he should have gotten more wins. And I think the only person that's not going to affect is Ricky, and I think that's a great thing. Yeah, and I remember just a year ago, we were at Brookline for the U.S. Open, and he was on the driving range up until Thursday morning waiting as the first alternate, and he didn't get the nod. Mm -hmm. So now he's set. I'm sure he's going to be in majors for what, the next? This definitely sets him up. Uh, But look, I mean, for Ricky, too, it's not for a lack of trying. The guy was trying. Mm -hmm. You know, like you said, he's qualifying into events. He's He's not putting it in, you know, some sort of like, mindless gear and just whatever but and so you could tell the the win meant something to him but it was cool to hear him say that and it just makes me even more of a fan and i i'm i'm pulling for him to keep moving up those ranks and get on this Ryder cup team i think he's going to be on the Ryder cup team and i'd be stupid not to bet money right now again on the show for the open on ricky his drives all ended up in the fairway and his putting is lights out yeah why would you not pick that guy it's just the open is such its own animal it's, it's such different a different style it's different. of game but when your game is hot, I don't know. I think the guy who's trending in the right direction for the Open is Rory. I got money on him already. Yeah. Right away. Rory's a guy that you got to put a couple bucks on. But but either way, like the Ryder Cup is coming up in September. Mm-hmm. Ricky can continue his trend and try to make him his way in there with points. He could also now be in the conversation of a, of a, a captain's pick. Mm-hmm. And I think that Ryder Cup teams are just better when he's around. 100%. I think he's a great team guy. I think he he adds this intangible element to the teams um, that can you know it just get it just helps. I think it just helps with that whole overall vibe. So it'll be interesting to see what what happens. There. And uh, you know what's funny? Speaking of Ryder Cup, I'm thinking of like Ricky and like his buddies. Like, is it going to be another Jordan and Justin and whatever? Justin Thomas is 66 in FedEx Cup. Yeah. He's been playing pretty bad. Is he even in the Ryder Cup running? I don't think he's in there as far as a lock right now. No, he could be a he could be a captain. Player. But I, I the way that you, you have good and bad seasons, of course. You know? Of course, the way that his season's been going and the frustration you see him expressing, I I wouldn't be surprised if if he's the type of guy I could see him benching himself. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. If he's not feeling like he's playing to where he's going to do the best for that team, JT's the guy I could see speaking to the captain, being like. Get somebody else. Hmm. I don't it's know. It's going to be interesting to That's see. That's just my own vibe on it. Um, but it, it will be interesting to see where that ends up shaking out. There's still a lot of golf to be played. Um, the other thing, too, just to quickly touch on is we talked last week about TPC River Highlands and how low those guys were going. And Rory made the comments of whether uh, he had said technology has passed that course by and talking about rolling the ball back. We had said, we, our vibe was we'd rather see them just play harder courses. But we also asked you guys, you know, do you think that sometimes there's a place in the schedule for spots where they can go real low? Mm-hmm. Well, now they've gone real low two weeks in a row. I mean, 22 under. Yeah. There's an aspect of that, though, that was conditions. Once that place got soft, these guys were just sticking pins. They were sticking pins. Totally. But it wasn't as much of a birdie fest as TPC. Yeah. Well, there was a lot of I mean, there was a lot but, on Sunday. But I feel like TPC is always a 59 watch. Yeah. Well, what did what did uh, Mark Cow shoot? Like 63 on Sunday? Something he made like something that. like four or five birdies mm-hmm. in a row. So yep. it was, in a way, it's another birdie fest. But it, either way, it was some good action. Max Homa, second hole in one for him yeah. of his career. Um, and there's another guy, too, that at any time, at any pick, time he, he can he win. He can pick up another win. Um, and Hadwin, like I said, Hadwin played really well so it was it was a good fight it was good to see uh what i would call not like a premier event on the schedule still come down to that playoff gave us a little bit of action and uh man that final hole in the playoff just shows you how golf is golf man. yeah it, we i thought ricky was out of it on his drive because mm-hmm. he went right yep into the by the grandstands, and then he just hit a golf shot for the ages, for the ages. put it to about five feet if he didn't hit that ball to where he did on his approach like if he didn't get it that extra like one foot like if he was on the back side of that little knoll on the green yeah. that would have been inches, like man. a 40 foot putt instead yes. of what he had so it's a game of just- inches and by the way 
Adam Hadwin has a swing tempo that I would he get mugged for. I know. Like how know. delicious is that guy's swing? Especially his his wedge shots. Oh. He's got such a like a one piece swing where he just keeps those arms straight on those yeah. short wedge shots. It's something to and watch, guys. It is something. Go it's check something it. to watch. Um but before we switch gears and dig into this match, yeah. the other one we gotta give a nod to is our guy Rob LeBritz. Big week. I'm Big so week happy for him. I texted him last night. I was hoping to get a text back before the show, but he's probably swamped with text messages right now. Rob, is this the one he wanted to win when we yes. first met him? It was. He's been, and we've talked about it before, and we've had him on the show. He's been so singularly focused the first that he thing just he said wants to, to win the U.S. Senior Open. It's like when we shook his hand and said, nice to meet you. I think it was the first thing he said to us. Yeah, he's like, I'm going to win. Like, he's yeah. just like manifesting yeah. it into, into the universe. Uh, but Great week. He great gave week, a couple but, back on the back nine yesterday, which is unfortunate. But at one point yesterday afternoon, I looked, and he was in solo second behind Langer. Yeah. Still like four or five behind him. That's how That's the thing. great he was To win, playing. you got to go through Langer. Yeah. It's proving to be harder and harder. Yeah. It is being, yeah. Incredible what he Most wins on the Champs do. Tour. He's like the tiger of the Champs Tour now. Yeah. Good for him. Uh, and and but, just so many majors. But what does this do for Rob now? Because I, I guess he's set. I think he's got some exemptions. I think he'll be back next year. He missed the, the Schwab uh, playoffs by like one spot last year. Yeah. Well, listen, at this T5, should help him a lot. I'm T4. Yeah, it puts him in the top five yep. in, a, in a major. It, it's got to set him up for quite totally. some time. Absolutely. Because uh, it's, been, it's been an interesting ride. We, we, we had Rob on the show when he first made it onto the – Mm -hmm. PGA Tour champions. We did. And then we had him after his first season and just seeing that difference of like him continuing that fight of trying to stay on the tour and stuff like that. I remember calling him out for the double bogeys. Yes. <laughs> no, he said triple. Triple. And he's like, whoa now. Yeah. He's <laughs> like, Pump the brakes. Pump Mike. the brakes, bro. But that that yesterday's finish bumped him into the top 30 now. He's at 412,000 of earnings this year. That's crazy. Good for him. Way more than last year, and we're only in June. Yeah. He's a guy who just, he works so hard. He's such a, a great story of a guy who w went so long to try to just get onto the pro tours. And then when he finally made it there, you could tell how much he appreciates being there. Yeah. And I think that's a story that we can all kind of get behind. So that was, that was cool to yeah, see. Yeah, that was great to see. Good for him. So let's dive into this match a little bit. Yes. So first of all, I mean... It's it's become it's pivoted in so many ways and and now we've got a situation where started with Phil and Tiger and then we saw, you know, different iterations where pros were worked in and then they slowly started to bring in some, you know, I remember like Manning, yeah, and, you Tom know, Brady, Brady, Brady. It was like Phil and Brady and Manning and Tiger. Yeah, right. it was but still you still okay. had the the pros in there, kind of anchoring it. You did. We've now moved completely, completely away from away. that. And we've got you know guys from the NFL, guys from the NBA. Now I can't take anything away. They're they're fantastic golfers. They are, and for for be, not being their primary sport, mm -hmm. and they they really, the highlight reel was great. There were some great shots that were made. There's no doubt about it. Um, but. From a pure entertainment standpoint, for me, now I'm speaking just for me as a golf as a golf fan primarily. It's been losing a lot of traction for me. I yeah. mean, this could have been a YouTube video. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Like, was that's it on the TV. Yeah, it was, it was on. Okay, yeah, but you know, it's, it's clear that we didn't watch it live. Clear. Yeah, it just didn't capture my attention. Right. In the same way. I honestly didn't even know it was happening. I saw, yeah, exactly. I, like, I saw it like the day after. I'm like, oh, I guess that happened. Which drives this question for me of, is it targeting a different demographic than us? It has to be. And, and well, the reason well, I ask this too is like you say, and I said, we didn't, we didn't even see the promos really. The first match, the promos were everywhere. But is it everywhere we're looking? So what I mean by that is, have they kind of moved on from trying to attract the already golf audience? And is it becoming more of a crossover event? And what I mean by that is maybe they, I, I don't, I mean, the NFL is not playing right now. I'm admittedly don't watch a lot of the NBA. Maybe a lot of the ads and stuff were stuff that were running during those games. Mm -hmm. Are they trying now to more so target the people who are going to come over because they're already a Curry fan mm -hmm. and they want to, and, and now they're getting introduced to another sport. 
It's possible. I could totally see that. Right? Ver- versus for me, I'm already a Tiger fan, a Phil fan. I'm watching the original matches because they're in it. Right? Yeah. I wonder if this is becoming more of a thing that's like, hey, let's target the M- let's get the crossover of the guys who are watching the NBA and the NFL and bring them into golf because those guys may not. I mean, everybody knows Tiger, sure, Phil, kind mm-hmm, of, mm-hmm. but they may not know who the top twenty-five golfers Definitely in the world not. are right now, and that might not be the draw, right? So, well, they did choose. They chose basically the four biggest people. In other sports. Right. I mean, if you're looking at it, Patrick Mahomes is probably the biggest star in the NFL right now. Mm -hmm. Travis Kelsey has one of the biggest sports podcasts in the world right now. Steph Curry is just a dog. Same with Clay Thompson. Like, just as big as it gets. But I just think they lost, like, that like core golf audience. Right. Like, they're trying to take the young kids that are that love these players and be like, oh, this is what golf is as well. That's what I'm thinking. Like, so before we kind of come up with this hypothetical reworking of how to save it, Mm -hmm. the first thing we got to wonder is, does it need saving at all? Is it just something that's now morphed into a primarily for golf audience and moved into something for, this is primarily for an NBA and NFL audience with the hopes that it'll expose them and possibly bring them into golf, like as a crossover. But who's trying to pull them in? A lot of people. Like who the runs PGA the PGA Tour? Tour. The no. PGA Tour could be trying to pull Got them it. in. It's not Capital One. <laughs> <laughs> Capital One wants eyeballs, <laughs> yeah, right? right? At the end of the day, because right. it's a sponsorship. But but I'm pretty sure they did it on TNT, which is like the big basketball channel. Yep. They had Ernie. They had Chuck. <laughs> like They had all the guys that are like there for like, basketball yep yeah. so it kind of felt like a basketball that's broadcast what I mean. a little bit so i think that that's what it is and if you're measuring the success we'd have to measure it against what its intention was for me the last match that i watched was the one under the lights with tiger, tiger and jt and yeah because i mean that was a golf event golf event it was all golfers that, i thought that was the last one i thought that was the last one that they did it might have been the last one that it might have been i'm not sure yeah, i don't know if they worked that another. back that was Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think at some point we need to separate these paths. I think there's a place for both of them. Mm -hmm. I think the idea of having something, I think the confusion lies that every time it's just called the match and just changes so dramatically in how it's played. I love the idea of exposing and, and showing, you know, audiences of other sports what golf can be because there's so many athletes Mm -hmm. in other sports who love golf. Sure. And if they could bring the audience over to it, it helps grow the game and, and it helps grow the audience for golf. That makes sense. Have whatever you want to call it. If you want to call that the match, have that. Have guys who are who are other in athletes in other sports, but they're great golfers, play against each other and bring those audiences in. Yeah. But then for us, the more already established golf audience and the diehards, that's where I'd love to see something brought in that's maybe a little bit less entertainment and a little bit more competition like for this it's it's pure entertainment it's like you got the guys jabbing each other you got you know you got um barkley and yeah. all that stuff i would love to see almost like we used to have the wide world of golf bring back some sort of it whether maybe it gets its own name or it's another type of match series bring back head-to-head matches against the best golfers and put it in prime time Mm -hmm. And put it on those courses, we talked about this last week, that don't get PGA Tour events. They used to hold matches, Hogan, Hogan. Sneed, at Pine Pine Valley. Valley. I know. Jeez, can you imagine? Bring it it back. I would love to watch that. I would watch uh, JT versus Speeth at Sleepy Hollow. (laughs) Right? Right. And televise it. Yeah. These are courses that will never, Never. ever get a PGA Tour event because they don't have the capacity for it. Even some of these ones from the Road to Pine Valley, courses they're playing that can't get events. Right. Yeah. There's certain places that that don't have the ability to put in grandstands, that don't have the ability to take whatever. Right. You know, put put those in. Put, you know, and and, and it could be any, whoever's like playing hot right now, two big names, two, two, two big names against each other. At at Cyprus, yeah, 
Yeah. You know, and have it be like maybe small amount of tickets, maybe 10,000 people on the ground and, and, and just a film crew. Yeah. You know, you know what it's that speaking, would light me up. You know what I would love to see if if, if it's not gonna if it's gonna be other athletes, I'd love to do like a battle of the goats at the Grove and have like Jordan, Tiger, Brady, and like Jeter. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think Jeter would be the worst golfer there. But like something like that would would pique my interest. For sure. Cause I mean there's a curiosity there of seeing those guys all together. Grove, I think that would bring them. other sports in. But at the end of the day, as for as good a golfers as all those guys are. I don't know if they're quite good enough to sustain the attention of, yeah, of watching an 18 hole full match. Yep. I, here's where I would rather have, for me, as the, the golf demographic, the golf audience, I would rather see you take two of the best players, rivalry players, whatever, and throw them in a match on a course that we just don't usually get to see. I love it. You know? Yeah. Pinehurst number four. Right, right. You know, the list goes on on Tobacco Road. Imagine Tobacco Road. Tobacco Road will never, ever get a PGA Tour or, or other professional event. But if you went out there and you had... How about Scheffler Rom one-two punch at Tobacco Road or something? Right. <laughs> You'd be sick. Right. Or or, or, or or now that the tours are converging again, mm -hmm. get like... Live guys. versus PGA Tour. Right. Get like Brooks out there. You They'd know, be smart if Scheffler. they started doing that. If they did one-on-one -on -one live matches right. like that, like DJ versus Cam versus that, Rory. That's the thing. Like that will pull that audience and it will it'll open people's eyes to seeing some courses that they wouldn't otherwise see. Yeah. I think it could be some sick primetime stuff. Kingsborns. And oh. the other reason I think there's a huge gap now for that is look at look at how much the Ryder Cup and the President's Cup captures our attention because we wait this long to see our favorite players go head to head in a match. Right. Well, we've lost the the what do you call it event, the match play event that was on the schedule. It was the last oh, one. Oh, the Dell match play. At the Dell. Yeah. Yeah, that's gone. We right. so now we don't even really have a match play event to look forward to. No, we don't. So this is where I think this is the perfect opportunity to reignite the match or whatever you want to do it, and and. Or if, like I said, split the split the fairway and have one type of match for non professional golfers who are from other sports, and that brings a new audience into golf. But for us diehard golf fans, yeah, I want to see head to head matches against our favorite players at new and exotic locations. I agree with that totally. I think teeth of the dog. <laughs> you know, we can just keep going on and on, on and on. Imagine, man. yeah. I think that it needs to be based in like good golf like specifically like so if you're going to do teams have the teams be run by pga tour players but then interject the pop culture other sport athletes in periodically you know what i'm saying like they get to the second tee and travis kelsey and his brother jason are there like ribbing the guys playing golf so that the non-golf fans are like oh i know these guys yeah yeah but the golf carries the event like good golf. I still think you're event. right. You need good golf. And and you guys, to, again, weigh in in the comments. Let us know. Do you think it, it has a place to be a crossover event where it's mixed, where you've got pro golfers and non-pros playing together? Or Because, again, I'll go back to the roots. It was it was Tiger, Phil, huge bragging rights. Big huge pile of money. Pile of like money. Like it was done right. Yeah. Boxing match. That's what I want to see. Yeah. And I, and I think... Yeah, you got to have golf. You got to have pro golfers. And there's just enough at this point there's enough matchups that we'd all love to see to keep us all happy there's for plenty. a while. And they're always doing it at the at the win in Las Vegas, right? I think it's always there. I yeah, or it's always at Vegas. They, I thought it was at Shadow Creek. Something It's like, somewhere in Vegas, yeah. Yeah. But what I'm saying is like there's so many different matches. We just rattled off a few of guys we'd like to see go to head to head. Yep. I would just do one-on-one -on -one matches. Man, it could just be, it could be really cool. I'm more intrigued about the courses. But there's got to be right. heat. I want to see the courses that I want to You know see. what I'm saying? There, there's got to be heat behind it. Like A big this enough last, purse, there's going to be heat. Yeah, but this last match had no heat behind Nothing. it. Nothing. But going back to the Tiger and Phil, the original yeah. one, I like I wasn't even in the golf world at that point, and I knew that that was going down, and I wanted to see it because the amount of times that I watched Tiger and Phil when I was a kid watching golf with my mom, mm -hmm. like the amount of times I saw the two of them go at it, I'm like, oh, this is what I've always wanted to watch. Right. But now there's just absolutely no well, heat. Well, the reason why there's right? no heat, think about it. 
why would you watch guys like Steph Curry and these guys play? It's their personalities that you want to see. It's the curiosity to see how well they play. But at the end of the day, do you really care if he beats Josh Allen? <laughs> right. Right. But but everybody was so focused. And, and the only argument was was that they played it more as an exhibition. Did they really play as hard as they wanted? As, you know what I mean? They wanted to. But everybody would be like, oh, that was a hypothetical. If you put Phil and Tiger head to head, who would win? Mm-hmm. Right? That's the way I feel now. Right. Like, yep. You know, take take Rory as hot as he's playing, and and he goes right up against Scotty Scheffler or somebody like that. And I I actually have curiosity of who's going to win. Sure, not just the curiosity of tuning in just to see some an entertainment product of guys joking with each other and having a good time out there. Or get like two guys that are like known that they don't like each other. You know what I'm saying? Like I know that Rory and Sergio just made up, and yeah. like they're friends. Which is again. a whole other funny story. But, but yeah. Wouldn't it have been awesome when they were just beefing to throw them both in a one-on-one? Like, I yeah. know Sergio probably wouldn't be able to hang with Rory necessarily, but... Well, that's what everyone said time, at the height of the Bryson Brooks. Mm-hmm. It was like, put them together. Like, now I want to see them Didn't play. they go heads up? They did. They did. And it was I think it was smart, and we got away from that. Right. So right. I, I think that that's, that's where it's... I think there's got to be a place for still pro golf, really high-caliber golf, high caliber matches there's a spot for it because we don't get match play outside of the Ryder cup and president's cup now and there's so many golf courses that could be put in the spotlight without having to do the whole massive four-day event pga tour yeah, i agree i agree i hope you see it yeah you know just give me those guys at tobacco road <laughs> yeah that would oh, be pretty sweet boy would that have, get ratings oh it would Anyway, let's uh, let's do a quick break there. We'll do a quick word from our sponsors. Then I want to talk about come back. We'll talk really quickly again about Ryder Cup. Taylor Gooch, yes. Um, and then we just want I want to recap just the status of where we are in this whole live and PGA Tour merger type of thing because the news came out. It was super hot, and then all of a sudden we didn't get a whole lot of more information. Yeah, right. We, you know, we had it. We did have some leaks, some documents, and now we've got even maybe Congress getting involved. Is it going to happen? Is it not? So, we'll talk about that real quick. But let's do a quick word from our sponsors. To be your best today, you have to outperform the player you were yesterday. For some, it might be breaking eighty. For others, it might be breaking the course record. And for all of us, it's playing a golf ball we know will help us get the most out of our game. The new Titleist Pro V1 and Pro V1 X are the most advanced to date and will help reward your best swings like never before. Both models are longer, they're even more consistent, and they feature that unrivaled control you just don't get anywhere else. Now remember, the Pro V is the best combination of distance, spin, and feel in the game. It delivers that penetrating flight. The Pro V1X flies higher, spins a bit more in the short game, but it still gives you that low spin on longer shots to really maximize your distance. There is something in there to fit for everyone, so I definitely recommend getting out there doing a ball fitting this summer. It will really open your eyes to your game and what best fits you. You can find out more about the new Pro V1 and Pro V1X, including which is that best choice for you at Titleist.com. And FootJoy, the number one shoe in golf, offer us the chance to create our own custom shoes. And we've had so much fun doing this. We've we've done countless shoes. Uh, The MyJoy tool on the FootJoy website allows you to get uh, really creative with this. We could show your style with a wide selection of premium leathers and custom options. I mean, each pair of MyJoys are handmade to your exact specifications so that you can create a shoe that's as unique as you are. So, you know, you want pink on the leather, you want red. If if you're an orange guy like Ricky, I mean, you can get nuts. There's tons of options. You got to see it for yourself. Go to footjoy.com, click on the MyJoys shoe creator and go for it. Have fun with it. Even if you don't end up buying them, I'm telling you, you're going to have so much fun creating them and you probably will end up buying them anyway. So go check it out, footjoy.com. One thing I'll say, just kind of wrapping up what we were talking about before, you guys in the comments, definitely drop in there and say what your take is on the match. And if you agree with us, like where would you like to see the matches played? Yeah. Some courses. I'd love to just kind of see, rattle off. I'm just looking at some up there. Favorites. I'm seeing yeah. like Bayonne. So many great <laughs> locations. So many. And here and a, abroad. And abroad. Right. There's just so many great locations. But anyway, um, so this whole thing that's with, with Liv and um, – and the PGA Tour, there's a lot, obviously, that's still in limbo. Um, we're still even waiting on an update on Jay's health. Yeah, no one's heard from Jay. No one's heard. But but he's we, the man in charge now. 
They did say that he is doing better and should be returning to work in the coming weeks. Did they ever say what it was, though? Did he have a no. heart attack? No. Stress? I, I really don't know. They didn't say specifically what it was, and his family put out a statement saying that they, you know, wanted their, their privacy through all this or whatever. It'll so. come out yeah, what it was. I'm eventually. sure it will. But the thing is, that in this this document that leaked, it was a six-page document, um, and, and you can go to golfisty.com. Eric did a, a great write-up on the whole thing. Um. The one takeaway that I saw in there is that there would be a there was a plan for some sort of methodology to to bring live players back, but a lot of it was contingent upon Jay kind of coming up with the planning for that. And it's just so interesting. It just makes you wonder, can he kind of put aside because he came after them hard. Now, there's now. a well, lot of back. I mean, he, yeah. He's gonna have to backpedal it because he backpedaled the whole. Like the I'm not taking is, money from these guys because of 911 and all that. I know like, he he walked that back immediately. The problem is for him personally to save any type of face, he has to walk this line that he has to at least make it perceivably that he's not backpedaling so much. So I think he's gonna want to put like some sort of show of like of some sort of penalty for guys returning well i think guys like phil and guys like patrick reed like the super vocal guys that were trying to go after the tour after they left i think they're gonna have a long road back to the pga tour mm -hmm. but then you have somebody like brooks who never really bad mouthed the tour a guy like dj dj's barely said anything since he's gone he just to resigned live. dj he, he's yeah, just it. playing golf you know what i'm saying yep. i know he doesn't want to go back to the pga tour but at the same time, like I feel like the tour is going to be much more apt to bring the guys back who didn't like burn the bridge on the way out. Yeah, yeah. Why would be their incentive to want? Like, why would a Pat Perez want to go play in the Farmers Insurance Open to get world rankings? I mean, what what's the incentive for them? Well, to yeah. Also, in that in that outline that you're talking about, they did say that the PGA Tour, Live, and the DP World Tour are going to work together to try and get live world golf points. ranking points like that was some, that was a big point of it that i saw it and i'm like yeah. all right that could be but you that, know they're all gonna act in good faith is what i kept hearing <laughs> but i also saw in there that the future of live in general was still undecided i heard that but as well i heard reports that at this last live event uh yesir had a players meeting with the live guys and uh -huh. said to these live guys, don't worry about live. Live is, is my baby. And that's what he said. The guy with all the money yeah, all the is money. saying lives, not going anywhere. Lives my baby. I just, I just wonder if you might see a rebranding. Like you might, I wouldn't see, be surprised. Right. Like uh, maybe the tours kind of rejoin. Because they're already saying they're going to join. That there's going to be a new name, TBD. I, I just well, wonder. Well, that's for the company that owns it all. Yeah, I, I just wonder if like you'll have like if they move to this like which originally I remember Ernie Els and some of the guys were suggesting if you had so they weren't con directly conflicting mm -hmm. and one was like live was like a tour that ran for the off season the wraparound season goes away who yeah, knows right. Because at the end of the day, if you continue to try to run them parallel, you're and if, if, if guys are then able to be on both tours, at some point you're gonna have guys who have to sit out one or the other event and then the, and then if they're all under the same company, they're not gonna want to cannibalize themselves. Right, no, like I'm not gonna watch this event because I'm gonna watch that yeah, event. Right. So it's very interesting to see what ends up happening. But meanwhile, over on Live, you got Taylor Gooch pulls in another win. Another four mil, right? Get this, he is now one, and now this is a combination of individual and team money. He's made thirteen point three million dollars on live in this, <laughs> this year. year. This in the year. eight events that he's played in this After year. After he was released from the four aces, right? Well, he's bounced around teams. Yeah, but that's so he, his uh, his total for the year. Right. Right. No matter where he's been. Mm -hmm. Scotty Chef has made like twelve million. <laughs> <laughs> Like yeah, no, I think he made Scotty Scheffler made eighteen point five in eighteen events. Yeah. Okay. And Taylor Gooch is almost eight. there, only at eight. 
Yeah, 18.5 and 8 events. Rom is 15.2 and 16 events. It's crazy. But he, Taylor also becomes, you know, the first live player to win three events. Brooks has got two. Dustin Johnson's got two. two. There's still a lot of money is being made over Gucci there. Is Gucci Ryder Cup guy? So there's your question. <laughs> I would take him over JT right now. 100%. I, I It just... but. When are we going to get those answers? I know. When are we going to get the answers on Ryder Cup in general? Because the guy who's got to be asking the big questions is Stenson. He I think was it, the Ryder Cup captain and got it taken away because he left for live. Yeah, I don't think there's no there's no going back on that because I think Luke Donald's been through way too much already. He's probably, do they do they throw him back as like an assistant captain at this point? I think if anything, maybe get him on there as an assistant because you feel like he's if everybody still, else is what do you if do the do doors back open, but. I'm like, think, what are you going to do with a guy like Poulter? Is he one of those guys that burnt too many bridges and isn't allowed back? You know what I'm I just saying? don't think like, he's that as good enough to be on the team. Live or no live. I think Poulter's just washed. Yeah, but he's been like the Ryder Cup guy. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's, he's a guy who like he seems like I he's know. older and, and washed, and then all of a sudden he gets in that Ryder Cup and, and he's, he lights on fire. It's true. I can't argue that. You can't argue. And but, like Sergio, like another does, guy. Doesn't he's Sergio like Sergio have like the best record in Ryder Cup history? Or something like in like head he's to head up matches. There. Like, he's up there for sure. He's great matches. He's another match guy. But but it shows you this is the probably the most difficult year on captains for captains picks <laughs> yeah. than there's ever been. No before. doubt. Because no doubt. now they've got guys that could have probably could have earned their spot on if they were just on tour. Right. And they're not. So now they have to be captains picks. But either way, I mean, I, I'm. I'm even getting a little bit tired of the back and forth with the live and the PGA tour. And I'm, I'm kind of wanting answers because I feel like we're living in this bizarro world where all of a sudden, as you mentioned earlier, now you're hearing like Sergio saying, it's so great to have my friend back. And he's back friends with Rory. Remember they had their contentious split over this whole thing and they yep. were, and they were lobbing, you know, insults at each other. It's just like, what happened? Like, Seriously. Still, I still, we're all feel like we're such playing catch up. I know. I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's silly. I don't know what's going to happen, but it is going to grab headlines. Either way, I'm crazy. saying we need an update. We do. I think once Jay's back in health or something, some, like we need an official sort of update of what the plan is. And we got to even see if the plan's going to go through because now Congress has gotten involved and is there antitrust you know, with this. There's a lot on the mm-hmm. fire. And then what happens to Norman? Does he just sell off? Well, great question. No he idea. made himself like the most hated guy in golf. But what it and then, depends. I mean, like, yes, all these guys who made themselves hated are also made themselves very wealthy, validated, <laughs> yeah. wealthy. Yes, but, but they had a lot of validation when this deal went through. Hundred percent. Because worked. now Norman can say, well, he can go back and say, like, well, listen, I did what I had to do to get the types of things into the golf that I've always wanted, mm-hmm. the team play, the mm-hmm. whatever. He could say, I've done that. Yeah, and the. It takes away this whole idea of just like where people were saying they didn't want the Saudi money. Well, now everybody's got the Saudi money. Right. And even the guys who said they didn't want it are getting it. Yeah. In one way or another. In one way or another. Because it's right? the financial, it's the biggest part financial backing. Either way, it's messy. And I think we just need an update. We need an update from somebody of where we're going to be because there's not much of the this season left. Nope. There's only something like eight events left. Yeah, well, we're going to be into FedEx the Cup playoffs, yeah, we're so. going to be in the FedEx Cup, and then it's like well, now we're starting to make plans for next year. Well, what does that schedule look like? Well, that Will new super be a thing? that fall series thing is going to kick off. It should the wraparound season wraparound. should kick right in, but but what does this shake up? And then in January you've got Tigers League starting up, too. Yeah, which is going to muddy the water. But I think to answer your question with Je- with um with Greg Norman. I think it's highly contingent upon does Liv stick around and still run as a parallel separate tour that's now just friendly with the PGA yeah. Tour. If if it does, then I think Norman stays around as the commissioner of Liv. Yeah. But if there's a true blending, then they've got to find another spot for him. Already rides off into the sunset with all his money. Totally. I mean, I want, speaking of that, I want to ask you, the, um, soccer, like the Red Bulls, is that a different soccer league than – than the country soccer, like for the yes. World Cup. Yeah. So there's two separate leagues. There's many leagues. There's you have MLS, leagues. Yeah. and then all, you have the Premier League, which is right. primarily overseas. Yep. There are many, many so leagues. So they're able to do separate But then leagues. you also have... And NASCAR has two, right? Or no? It's Formula One. NASCAR has a couple. NASCAR has like a feeder league. NAS- yeah, NASCAR they, has like the Corn Ferry Tour. Exactly. And they have... Okay. 
the PGA. Everyone's tour. got a corn ferry. And minor then, league, right? They're basically NASCAR, the truck leagues, and those are they're minor leagues ish that you you win your way up to the big show. Okay, but in soccer, yeah. like you're saying, there's a Saudi league, right? And they pay. Yeah. They offered Messi a billion dollars, right? For like a couple years to come play, Cristiano Ronaldo yeah, just signed big money. with a Saudi team and is getting like five hundred million over two years, right. like just ridiculous money million per kick. So this is happening <laughs> in every. But it's sport. a good yeah. point. Could okay. that be a similar model that we see soccer being the, the model? Because right. now we have Messi who came over to MLS, right? Yeah. And you you have these guys that what they'll do is they will compete in different leagues some leagues are obviously being higher than others like the premier mm -hmm. league but when it comes time for the world cup or things like that now they're playing for their country right right so so messi can go back and play for his country he does he plays in the world cup every year every, every year every even though years. he's for his his country did and there's other Beckham's international team? events too did he go to david beckham's team did he turn down the saudi and join he turned down the saudi and he went to inter miami which yeah. is owned by David Beckham, right? I don't know. I, I think, saw I think Beckham, news line. I think Beckham is LA. I think Beckham owns the LA Galaxy, but I could be wrong. Um, but Messi's deal is just absolutely insane. Being the MLS couldn't give him like the billion dollars that Saudi gave him. The entire MLS came together. And the sponsors as right. well came together. Because so it's great Apple, for the league. Yes. Apple yeah. has the Apple has the broadcast rights. Apple said, okay, we'll give you, Messi, a portion of the broadcast oh, money. Wow. Wow. So he's getting a portion of all the broadcast of the entire MLS from right. Apple. He's getting a portion of every, like everything soccer-related that Adidas sells. He's getting yeah. a piece of that. And then after his, wow, time, that's insane. after his time in the MLS, he has an option to buy a team the same well, way that cool. Beckham did. Hey, let me ask you this. I know you're a big Argentina fan. Yeah. If they didn't win that World Cup, does he get all this money and yes. he's a superstar? Oh, yeah. he's, yeah. Still the, he's still the best soccer player in the world. I mean, Ronaldo. Yeah, that's true. So he, at the end of the day, he's, as, as, as Zach was saying, he's a kind of a play, as we talked about crossover and bringing eyeballs yeah. in. Wherever you put Messi, the, the world of soccer eyeballs is going to sure. follow. So as MLS tries to continue to to expand its audience and demographic, bringing him over will now make it very international. People will watch it. We'll watch a lot more. And also it, he's it, there. it yeah. makes every single Inter Miami game a must see event. You know? Yeah. Yes. The ticket prices went from like average ticket prices went from like 50 something dollars to now they're average over $300. Jeez. Right. Just insane smart the business decision. Instantly, like overnight, the money just shot right. up. Right. Cool. There, there's no doubt that there's huge ROI on that. So, so maybe there is a world where all these golf leagues just live that's together. Just it. I mean, might there be a world where whether it's under the same name or different name, live continues to live on, the PGA Tour lives on, and now there's a little bit more competition for eyeballs? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, of, of of week to week of what event and who mm -hmm. gets what event. Uh, but the I mean, if this shows you anything, they'll all be under this one umbrella. <laughs> so that means that they'll all play nicely together. Got it. It's tough, though, when comparing it to soccer, because their soccer is the biggest sport in the world. Right. I mean, that's and a there different. are thousands of ridiculously good soccer players at different levels. Sure. So I believe that. There aren't as many wicked good pro golfers, so there couldn't be more than I would say two leagues going on at the same time. Because then, you know, you're going to have leagues with just well, people did, that aren't that good playing. Well, did the XFL fail? It's in the process of failing. <laughs> it lost. <laughs> it's it, on it, its way. It lost a lot of money. The Rock lost a lot of money. Okay, I feel like they've tried that with with football so many times. But XFL was not a Saudi based thing. No, that's no. the rock. That's the rock. Right. Right. Okay. So I think that's where, like I said, you, you got to find a way that, especially if they're all working together, that you're, you're, you have enough leagues to fulfill the demand of eyeballs without having too many leagues and too many different tournaments that it starts to 
oversaturate itself mm-hmm. and now cannibalize and split views between them. They're going to now, if nothing else, there I'm sure there will be if they do remain separate leagues, there will be a sit down and developing the schedule together. Right. Yep. You know, you might see where these alternate event PGA tour events like the Barracuda or something like that might start to drop off mm-hmm. because there's just not enough room for all of it. Yeah. Where are they going to do it all? Yeah. And now you'll have live event. Is it a live event this week or PGA tour event? Or they'll just find a way to merge them and maybe it'll be a poor Barracuda different season. <laughs> yeah. But at some point you can't Barbasol. have. Yeah. You, how many events? Can Bermuda. You have? Zurich's out of there. Zurich's Zurich. gone. Frank oh. will be thrilled. <laughs> anyway, we'll leave it there. What I, one thing I will say is no pod next week. Vacation, much much needed vacation. Enjoy it, dude. Next week, I cannot wait. Going away with the family, uh, but we will be going? back heading to Aruba. My man, Carib. Carib My wife. We've all been to the Caribbean in the last. Like, we all the went to the Caribbean month. the last month. Separately. Separately. <laughs> well, my yeah. wife's 40th. So nice. we're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna get away. We've been long overdue for a vacation. So Sweet. getting away, but then we will be back strong the week after. We've got Ooh, the, the last the major of the year, the open championship. We're gonna dig into that, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of storylines. Plus, it will be more or less the first real major after the dust is kind of starting to settle. Yeah. Because we announced the 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 leagues coming together around the U.S. Open. That's right, and everybody's head was spinning. Mm-hmm. Now we'll be very interested to see how this plays out. So, so we, wait, is that a year anniversary of my mullet? Did that happen at the last U.S. Open? Was Cam Smith the last winner, or no, the, the last the Open, Open championship? That's yes. that's a uh, a year of the mullet. Yep, wow. it feels yeah. like much longer. It than does that. feel like a long long time ago. Uh, but it shows you also how much can happen in a year because Cam won that, then went to live. You feel like he's been there forever. I feel like he's been pretty quiet over in live, though. He's been, uh, yeah. yeah. But I, I, I could see him possibly uh, doing big things again to try and defend his title. Yeah. He's the type of guy whose game could, works well over there. Totally. So we'll break all that down next week, uh, in a week from now. But uh, in the meantime, guys, let us know your thoughts on this match. I'd love to hear it. Drop them in the comments, and we'll see you again in two weeks. <laughs>